My name is Matt, and welcome to Lessons I've Learned. On today's episode, I have social media extraordinaire, uh, <laughs> the owner of Clear Social Media, um, fellow cat lover, and Meow. Animal Crossing lover, and video game lover. Um, I have Ashton with me today. Ashton, how are you? I'm great. How are you today? I am doing pretty good as well. Yay! Um, before we sort of started this recording, we were just sort of like talking about TV shows and stuff. And so what is a show that you are currently watching right now? Oh, goodness. I am re-watching The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. <laughs> oh, very good. Very good. <laughs> what, um, what is your experience watching it now versus whenever you first watched it? Let's see. So when I first watched it, I watched it and I binged it like crazy because it's a Netflix show. But now it is like my Saturday morning ritual. I'll wake up, I'll make, I'll make a donut. And when I say make a donut, I'll pull it out of the box from the grocery store <laughs> and, and I'll sit on my couch and I'll be in my pajamas and I will just identify with Titus Andromedon and have donut crumbs all over my chest and be in pajamas. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, what is a show that, as you were a kid, like, what's a show that y y that young Ashton was, like, super into? Uh, Lost. Oh, okay. On Very ABC, good. Wednesdays at 7, 8 Central. What about, like, <laughs> younger, younger Ashton? Like, was there a show that, like, every Saturday morning you were watching, or? Okay, so this one is, like, way, way throwback. It was called Gullah Gullah Island. Gullah Gullah Nick Island, Nick yep. Jr. Uh-huh. Um, my great grandmother lived a couple of doors down from me growing mm. up, and every morning when my mom was like, "I can't handle you. You're too toddler Ashton right now. Please, please," she'd literally <laughs> shove me out the door, and I would walk my little happy three year old butt down the street to my great grandmother's house, and we would watch Gullah Gullah Island together. Do you remember the episode <laughs> with the maypole? Oh my I, I don't know, okay, I, I don't know why that, I, every time I think of Gullah Gullah Island, that is the one episode that I think of, is with the maypole, and like, I just remember the camera angle being really far out, and all the kids yes. walking around the maypole, and yeah. The first, sh the first drone shot is actually from that show. It's from I love Gullah Gullah Island. <laughs> you guys heard it here first. Add it to the Wikipedia page. <laughs> um, Ashton, what is... What is the first lesson that you ever remember learning? It could be something that was serious, or it could be something that was funny or lighthearted. Um, actually, I think it's more of like a blanket lesson, is mm -hmm. that you can learn anything when you put it to a tune of a, like a song or a okay. rhyme. Because Very like good. in kindergarten, we were like, P-U-R-P-L-E, and then we learned how to spell purple. And to this day, I am 26 years old, and I know how to spell purple because of the stupid rhyme. So I think it can be applied now to anything, mm -hmm. and if you're musically inclined, and that's the way you learn, right? That's it's just a good lesson. It's just to put it to music or put it to a tune. To this Absolutely. day, recently, actually, I realized that the ABC song, the alphabet song, uh -huh. is "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star." You didn't know that? I had no idea. I had absolutely <laughs> I mean, no clue. I mean, I don't think it's commonly known knowledge, but I think it, I, I mean, I personally remember hearing about it a few years back, so it's okay if you're just now <laughs> hearing about it. Well, I think it's because I probably learned, because I'm just so smart. Mm -hmm. I learned the ABCs before I learned Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So I just didn't put two and two together. Understandable. Understandable. <laughs> I wonder if yeah, there you are... yeah, you learned your ABCs. I wonder if there are other, um... If there are other songs that we don't realize that are sort of to the tune of other songs like that. Oh, um, probably. But that it is really interesting that you um, sort of brought that up because it, like, there are a lot of staples of things that are mm -hmm. um, sort of rooted in this. We're going to present this information to you in a song and then you're going to remember it. And even like people doing like grocery lists and things. I think yeah. I, I feel like that's a common thing or um, Schoolhouse Rock or Hamilton, like the, like, we have people that they know these things based solely on, like, a tune, a tune that was designed to help you learn by using a tune. My fiancé, actually, he knows all the state capitals because of Animaniacs. And it's, he's like, I, I can't, I don't know, but it's like, 
I yeah, and I've seen that video before, and I'm sure there are thousands of other people that probably also know them because of yep. Animaniacs. Yep, it's so weird. It's so weird. The human brain is just next level. <laughs> <laughs> so next level. It is. So next level. It's so 2030. The next. So yesterday. Brain. <gasps> what? Um, so you grew up in Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, you sort of touched on like the musicality of things. Do you feel like your interest in musical theater um, sort of geared you towards music, or like like what was your relationship growing up with music, and like how did that sort of turn into pursuing musical theater? So. I grew up, my parents are both, I don't want to give them credit where credit is due, (laughs) but they're somewhat uh, musically inclined. And so like, we were always listening to music and everything was always a song. And we had like cassette tapes out the wazoo of like Disney songs and like nursery rhymes. So I've always kind of been in that realm of like always having music around. What's funny is in middle school, actually, when um, it was time for you to take your electives, I did not, I did not want to be in any type of music class whatsoever. I was like, put me, put me in freaking, what was it called? Model UN. I was like, put me in Model UN. I don't want to What is Model UN? Model UN is where you all sit in a room and you're all a country and you have to be diplomats and kind of, there's like a, uh, there's like a problem and you have to solve it. Oh. And as countries, you're like, I'll give you a stack of hay for 20 shekels. And it's like, I don't know why I thought I was going to do that. I am like the least diplomatic person that I know. <laughs> I mean, it <laughs> sounds my, like a game though. It is. It, it, okay. it was actually very fun. Like, and especially when you've got like a bunch of teenagers screaming at each other over like, I need more salmon in my economy. Like, it's fun. So my mother was like, all right, you've got way too much creative energy. We need to hone that in. We need to get you focused. We need, I'm annoyed with you anyway. So like take that energy elsewhere. <laughs> and she put me in theater. She was like, you need to take theater. And I was like, all right, fine. And then from there, I've just been able to become myself almost in a way because I've been able to have this outlet that works for me and I'm able to create and give back and make awesome friends and have these amazing like intellectual and emotional relationships with people it's it, theater is a blessing for people that it works for because it it is an awesome outlet and it is therapy in itself almost kind of in a way what was the first show that you ever did uh, the first show i ever did was Tom Sawyer. And I was the aunt. Okay. And I remember my first line, and I went, I was the opening line to the show. And I went, Tom, Tom Sawyer, is that you in the kitchen? Where are you, boy? You're gonna be late for school. <laughs> and what grade were you when you did that? Oh, that was, that was, I think, probably sixth grade. Okay. And it's so, it's so funny, because the boy who played Tom Sawyer is, like, one of my best friends and we still talk and his girlfriend lives up here in Chicago and it's just like theater is just awesome and so (laughs) you discover theater and this sort of like world unfolds for you and so Mm -hmm. at what point did you decide that you wanted to pursue musical theater on like the college level it's kind of interesting because I didn't think I wanted to do that in high school everybody's like I have Broadway dreams and I'm like okay (laughs) You're from San Antonio, and you can't say. <laughs> but I had an excellent mentor, and an <laughs> I had an excellent. <laughs> I was, I was petty. I was petty. Yeah. I'll be the first oh to admit God. it. I'm still petty. I had an excellent mentor in high school. She was one of those teachers that was like, "No, that's not the part you can play. Why would I cast you as this?" When you have, when you can excel so much in this role, it's not the lead, but you're going to kill it. Mm -hmm. And me was like, no, I, I am Elle Woods. Excuse you. And she, she really like set me on my path and she's like, no, this is your niche. Follow it. And so I was really able to flourish. And I even went on to scholarship competitions for theater 
And I excelled really well as the role I was in, not the lead, but a supporting role. And that really opened my eyes to be like, wow, like, there are so many opportunities in theater. It's not just about being the star. It's about being yourself mm -hmm. and and being a part of a team. And so I think that really resonated with me. And um, I decided to kind of go off and audition on a whim. Um, and my, my theater teacher in high school really like pushed me into these awesome uh, opportunities, which launched me to go to college. Well, and it's, it's, it's really interesting that you sort of bring up the thing about being on a team and working as a team, mm -hmm. because I, I was sort of talking with someone previously about how it's interesting the skills that you sort of take from theater that then sort of expand into real life opportunities. I was working oh, yeah. with somebody um, about a year and a half or so ago, and I told them what I went to school for, and they s said, oh, well, like, what do you use that for now? And at the time, yeah. I, like, because it sort of caught me off guard, and I didn't really, like, think at the moment to say it, but things like that self-awareness of seeing where you fit in the bigger picture, or working with a deadline, or working with a team to get the mm -hmm. job done, um, I think those are really essential skills that um, sometimes people in other job opportunities and other job placements maybe they don't have those and i think that theater yeah. is one of those like workshop things that help you oh, really yeah. hone those skills yeah you're constantly working on yourself and working with others it's crazy it, it, it the way i see myself and i see other people in my life who haven't had theater it, it's very interesting to see how their social interactions are versus mm. mine and seeing that... Meaning that they're calm, they're not loud and yelling. Yes. <laughs> oh, goodness. There is a theater kid stereotype, and I hate them. <laughs> but sometimes they're true, though. Sometimes. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. Like, I love going to Denny's after, at midnight after a show Absolutely. in old age makeup. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I just I just can't take it off right now. I've got... I'm, I need I, to wear it to Denny's. I need to work. I mean, my pores are already clogged up. If I take it off, then I'm letting them breathe. And that's just not how this works. <laughs> <laughs> so you go to college for musical theater. Mm -hmm. I know during that time that you changed your major. Um, yes. So what sort of, what was your path as you were going through the college experience, studying musical theater? Um, what caused you to change it? And then what sort of led you to the career that you're in now? So I changed my major three different times in college. Um, initially, I was a theater performance major uh, because I didn't know what I was doing and I accidentally enrolled in the wrong major. <laughs> so I was there for about a year. And then when they did my uh, evaluation, they were like, wait a minute, your paperwork is wrong. I was like, oh, sorry. So then I was a music theater major and I was a music theater major for three years. I was in college for about six years. Um, and during that time, I loved it. I mean, I was performing, I was getting out and about, but something in me was like, I don't think you're, and this is perfectly fine to realize. I don't think that you're Broadway material. I don't think that you're me personally, I don't think that I'm ready to go and do this. And I don't think it's feasible. I have a short window for my personal type. And I don't think that it's going to be accessible for me now. Or I've already passed it kind of a situation. So I was like, I feel like I've gotten all I can for the most part out of what my program had to offer at that point. And so I was like, let's switch to the business side of things. Like, let's let's figure out... Maybe starting my own company, my own theater company. Let's think about maybe, you know, starting a talent agency or being in that realm. And so I started interning at a local talent agency in uh, the Oklahoma City area. And I started really falling in love with kind of the aspect of like being in charge without kind of being in charge. And so I really started falling in love with stage management and... um kind of directing the show, as you will. And so I ended up changing my major to arts entrepreneurship, which was like a new degree plan. Mm -hmm. um, and there weren't a lot of people in it. And my credits didn't necessarily line up with um, with what the program had to, 
needed from me and it was going to take me another couple years mm-hmm. to uh, graduate. So I ended up just doing and finishing my degree in a general studies. Got it. But that art, that arts entrepreneurship program was very interesting. I started learning about being an individual artist mm-hmm. and learning how to do my taxes and learning how to um, dwell out different tax forms and kind of becoming your own boss in a sense. And I really enjoyed that. And so that kind of launched me into this opportunity that I've created um, of being my own boss and helping others while still kind of being in the realm of creativity uh, in social media. So you're currently in Chicago and Mm -hmm. you work for an organization managing social media accounts and then you have your own company, Clear Social Media, where you have your own clients that you manage. Um, Correct. So what is... What is your experience that you are sort of learning managing social media for other people versus using social media for yourself as a consumer? Honestly, I'm so burnt out on social media. I <laughs> I I love doing it. Mm-hmm. It's addictive. It's and and the things work and being addictive, like having that addictive quality are like a match made in heaven for me cuz I'm constantly working and mm-hmm. I like it. Mm-hmm. Um But when I'm sitting there and I have nothing to do and I'm scrolling, I'm like, I hate this. This is awful. (laughs) This is awful. Why am I doing this? But I really enjoy the aspect of having everybody together and having everybody on your phone and being in control of what you're able to see. And I think that's the real beauty of social media is that you're able to be like, I like to travel. I'm going to, I'm going to start looking at travel accounts. Oh, I like theater. I'm going to start following Broadway accounts. And you don't have to see things that you don't want, which is really nice about social media. So just for people that are listening, so they have a reference, um, as far as like my background goes, I would say that like, if somebody had a Facebook page and a Pinterest page and a YouTube page, I would count that as three separate channels. Is that sort of how? Yes. So so for somebody that's listening, how many channels are you operating across all the things that you run, not including your own stuff? Like not including your own personal channels? <laughs> um, well, currently, I have about 15 clients. And each of those clients have at least three to four channels. And so what is a tool that, or like, like what are tools and helpful things that you use to sort of stay on top managing essentially like 45 channels? For sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's a lot of organization. Um, I have a calendar and I write down deadlines for sure. Like, okay, I need to have content done by the end of the month so I can push it out and have uh, my clients approve it for the following month. You have, um, I've got tons of Google Docs. I've got tons of spreadsheets uh, just with different things that need to be put out, different things that uh, the clients want put out and ideas and brainstorming. It's a lot of randomness that you kind of have to hone in. I don't really necessarily use a program per se. There's a couple, but it's mostly for analytics and uh, posting. That way I don't have to manually post everything individually. Absolutely. And so what is, so two side of question, what is your favorite thing about social media, which I think you might've already touched on just being able to sort of hone in on your interest and being able to really yeah. like find like with a fine tooth comb sort of get into the, Nitty gritty of what you're seeking, um, and then mm-hmm. what is your least favorite thing about social media? Um, my favorite thing about social media is just being able to connect. I moved away from my family um, a couple of years ago, and it's really difficult to kind of stay in touch with everybody. And social media is truly a blessing because you can be like, "All right, what's my aunt doing? Oh, okay, she's going back to school," or you know, and that way we don't have to constantly be like picking up the phone and being like, hello, how are you? And especially with people that you don't really don't want to talk to, mm-hmm. you could be, <laughs> you could just be like, all right, checking in. Awesome. And also like you can hone in on your interests and 
discover new things within those interests um, with, unfortunately, targeting targeted ads and uh, Google listening to you and what? But those things, I, I have become a, such a sucker. Like, I, I'm like, ooh, yes, a new pot and a new pan. I love this. Right. It comes in a cute color. Click. Well, it's interesting because I, like, in my mind, I, anytime I ever hear people talking about, like, targeted ads and mm-hmm. things along those lines, I guess I am of the mindset, well, of, of course, if I have sensitive information, I don't want somebody to have, have access to that sensitive information. But For if, sure. If a company that sells headphones knows that I am looking for a pair of headphones, it, in a way, I want to be connected with them if they're offering a good product because that makes it easier on my end. Um, Yeah. And you get to discover new companies, maybe something local, maybe something with a, with a attribute that you like that other headphones don't have. It, 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 it's a blessing and a curse, kind of, absolutely. because, like, when you say, like, ooh, I want to go to medieval times, and then you're scrolling, and, like, every other ad is a horse and a knight, and you're like, okay, I'm over it. I don't want to go anymore. <laughs> absolutely. Um, I would say that my least favorite thing about social media is probably the toxicity of it. Mm-hmm. Um. People go there to be themselves, clearly. But a lot of people abuse that power, and they can just be downright hateful or negative. Um, a lot of my... I have a very popular uh, channel, and it's... it's I mostly post, like, landscape photos of the area that it's in, and everybody's like, oh my goodness, this place is beautiful, I love this. And then you get the people that are like, oh, this place is run down, and the tourists have taken over, and... I hate what the city has become and yada, yada, yada. And it's just like, I'm sorry you feel that way. But like all of these people are enjoying what has Mm. been presented to them. And you're over here yucking somebody else's yum. Like, I don't, I just, I just don't understand how people can be so hurtful on the internet. And I think that's the thing I dislike most about social media. What is your favorite social media platform? And then what's your least favorite? Oh, goodness. Personally, I love Twitter. I love Twitter because it's easy to find stuff that you enjoy Mm -hmm. and accounts that you enjoy. And it's a little uncensored. Like, people don't really care what they put on that website. And so you have a lot of different views. You have a lot of funny memes. Um... And, like, you're able to connect and share those things even, and even if they're, like, not that great. Like, it's a good, I don't want to say get your, like, news source from Twitter, but, like, you can get a lot of in- interesting information. Like, recently there was a huge fire here in Chicago, and the news wasn't covering it. And so I just typed in the area I was in, the street that I thought the fire was on, and I got tons of pictures. I got tons of updates. The firefighters even had, like, a local thread of, like, okay, we're going, like, kind of like the police radar kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And that's I, that's why I love Twitter so much. Um, I think the one I dislike the most is probably Facebook. Um, I hate to say it, but it's it's turning into MySpace. <laughs> it's becoming a little. It's a little um, boomer. It's a little older generation. It's a little more friendly for uh, the interface is extremely friendly, so anybody could use it. Mm-hmm. But um, with that being said. There's a lot of negativity and a lot of uh, fake news, if you will. Um, And I don't know. I just feel like it's slowly being faded out. And Instagram and Pinterest and Twitter are becoming like the big head honchos. What is a direction that you would love to see social media move into? Um, Maybe not only as somebody who (laughs) manages social media for other people, but also as somebody who likes to consume it themselves. For sure. I would love to see, I I love seeing people become like their own influencer where they're, where they, they edit videos and they create content that they enjoy that looks good for themselves and not necessarily for other people. And I would really love to see more people 
become their own influencers and and post things that they like, negating completely what other people think. And I and I think that's kind of what social media has turned into. It's like, okay, how many likes am I gonna get? Okay, how many uh you know, how many comments am I gonna get? How much engagement am I gonna get? You have to create content for yourself that you like before you can put it out and market it towards other people. Because if you don't like it, other people aren't going to like it. Absolutely. So you have to be you have to be confident in yourself and you have to be confident confident in your own content before you present it to other people. And I would really like to see more people be open to liking things for themselves and then connecting with to other people who like things also for themselves and they like the stuff that people put out. Well, and it's almost um the way that I sort of look at it is I've always really had this interest with social media just because it's been really easy to just sort of like make things and put it on there. Um, and I, mm-hmm. I'm someone that I just like to make things. And so it's just sort of always yeah. been an outlet for me. Um, like I would, I would make videos in my room lip syncing and I would post them onto like a MySpace bulletin and, and yes. w- just, just cause I wanted to, just cause I thought it was fun. Yeah. Um, and then as You're I, making it for yourself. Absolutely. And then as I sort of got back into this YouTube, thing, uh, maybe five, six years ago, I was Mm -hmm. sort of looking at all the popular YouTube things at the time. And I was like, okay, I want to make videos, but it was really catered towards making videos stylistically. That was what was popular at the time. And I found myself, there there was, Oh, um, there was definitely like an, like a, a a formula on YouTube, especially people had like certain screen grabs that they would use for their uh, video thing. Absolutely. And it would be X amount of time and you would do X, Y, Z and definitely. Well, and it, it, it was something that I eventually found myself getting to this place to where I, um, I didn't really gravitate towards the content that I was putting out. And so it wasn't sustainable Mm -hmm. and it wasn't something that I was really wanting to, show people because I felt really proud of the work, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, I felt like it was gaining traction, but it wasn't something that was like, oh, this is something that is true to myself. Versus now, some of the stuff that I'm making, because I still like putting stuff out there. um, For sure. It's more true to myself, and I find, even though I'm not really getting the traction that I would always like, the sustainability behind it is is supporting um, me continuing through those times. Yeah, because you have to be interested in something to continue to do it. Absolutely. It's just like starting a new hobby. You're like, oh, I'm going to start. Uh, what is that one thing I started doing that I completely negated? <laughs> is punch needling. Okay. I bought all the stuff for punch needling. It's like it's like cross stitching, except you just like punch the. Okay. I did it for five minutes. I bought like like a hundred dollars worth of supplies uh-huh. and I'm like, mm, I don't like it anymore. And that's the same thing with social media. You, ha- you have to be creating content that you like for people to like it as well. As somebody who runs things for other people, do you ever have a mm-hmm. passion for wanting to get to the place to where you are making an income off of the own things that you're creating or you like the place where you're fitting it within social media? I definitely like where I'm sitting right now. Um, I have a lot of room to kind of do what I'd like and present, um, different outcomes for content Mm -hmm. in a way like, Hey, we could go this direction. Hey, we could go this direction. And that really fulfills my creative outlet that way. Um, and I'm getting paid to do it. So I'm not too upset about that. Um, but I think it's just finding the right client and it's okay to turn down work. Like if you, if you're, meeting with a client and they're saying, I want cookie cutter this. I want buzzword that I want SEO this. And you're like, uh, I get where you're going, but like, this isn't going to work. Like I, I personally feel like your business isn't going to grow from what I'm going to create from what you want versus me giving you different options and different directions and going that way and growing organically that way, instead of trying to piggyback on the trend or right. the buzzwords. Do you find, as you have sort of been in this social media world, um, what do you find to be interesting from the way that people perceive social media from the outside? Like, as your um, as your aunt who may just be a consumer of social media and who may just mm-hmm. be posting on Facebook and checking in, like, what do you find your experiences like with those other people 
how they view social media and how you maybe see social media from the inside out. I actually have a funny story about that. The, so the, one of the accounts I have um, is a very popular area in Arizona. And people will get um, our posts organically on their feed somehow. And they'll comment on, like, the original post, and they'll be like, oh, Facebook is listening to me. And I, as a content creator and page manager, will go, and I'll type, I'll put, like, a GIF or something. I'll be like, we're always watching. Or, like, something something cutesy like that. Or, like, you know, uh, an ear up to a door or something. And people either react in, like, oh, my goodness, what the – I didn't know somebody was going to respond – or they'll be like, that is funny. This is good content. I'm going to follow your page. That's awesome. So it, 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 it's very interesting because some people are very taken aback because people obviously want their personal privacies protected. Absolutely. I do. But other people are just kind of along for the ride and they're like, that's funny. Yeah, they're listening and, they're, and they know it and they acknowledge it. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so sort of um, – <clears throat> Moving from the social media to Chicago, what is, um, what's something that took you to Chicago or what is the thing that took you to Chicago? And then what is sort of your experience being there? Definitely. So my fiance and I moved to Chicago just about two years ago, two years ago in March. And, um, he got a really awesome job opportunity and I had just graduated college. And so I was like, <gasps> It was not Broadway, but it's Chicago. And so, <laughs> so I was very interested in the theater scene up here. And that was definitely a plus for when we moved up here. But then coronavirus hit and I was having a really tough time trying to find a job in the theater scene and auditions were being canceled. So I really haven't had the opportunity to go out and explore as much as I would like to. But as soon as I get that needle in my arm, <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going out and we are auditioning and we are going to go see shows and we're going to be part of the art culture here in Chicago because it's it's truly a beautiful culture um in the art scene here. What is something that you have learned about yourself since you've been in Chicago? I like to be alone. <laughs> Being in quarantine is kind of awesome. I I I know it's horrid to say that, but I've truly learned a lot about myself in that I work well by my by my own lonesome. I don't think I could survive in an office job. I, I've learned that I can be an independent person and still kind of find my own niche and make a profit and make a, make a living doing so. And and I get to enjoy this beautiful city that we have. We. We order in, we get to go out to restaurants when it's permitted, and it's a really awesome area to be in. I know that right now, um, it seems like within these last few years, and I'm sure moving forward, there are people that um, they really have an interest in creating things for social media and mm -hmm. maybe being like social media influencers. And I like, I know for myself, like I would love to get to the point to where I'm creating stuff that I'm putting online and I'm either making AdSense or I have some backing that I'm getting from the things that I'm creating um, yeah. that I would love to be able to make an income from the things that I was creating online. Um, and the, experiences that, that I've had over the past, let's say, 10 years with creating things, mm -hmm. um, I realize now sort of where I fit into that big picture and maybe what a realistic goal is. So what mm -hmm. is some advice that you would give to somebody if they, um, maybe they just realize that they have a desire for social media and they, and they like social media. Maybe they like the analytics aspect. Maybe they like the content creating aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, what is some advice that you would give to somebody who wants to get into that field, whether it be managing or creating content or any of one of those scopes? For sure. It's not going to happen overnight. It's definitely a buildup. Um, it takes a long time to organically grow um, as a person and on social media. So you can't, it's not as much as the internet is instant gratification managing and creating is not um it's gonna take time it's gonna take a lot of issues 
maybe you run into some problems. You have to be persistent and you have to be, you have to want to get to where you want to be and have to want to work for it because it's not just going to happen. Like, yes, there are the opportunities where people go viral and then they cash in on that. But as soon as you stop going viral, as soon as you stop becoming relevant, then you're, you drop off. You don't get to, you don't get those advertisement opportunities. You don't get, um, AdSense. You don't get any of that. Um, it, once you, you have to be able to grow organically and slowly but surely, because then you become relevant constantly rather than just being viral and instant. You have to become, it's a, it's a gradual grow and you have to be prepared for that. Awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah. What is something that you are learning about yourself right now that maybe you're sort of not really sure of what the lesson is, but maybe you have an idea of where it's heading? I'm learning that I am becoming a functioning adult. Like, I have a really close relationship with my parents, and I would call them all the time asking for questions like oh my goodness this is happening what should I do and usually they would just be like you need to figure it out but they would give me advice obviously but I'm realizing that I don't need mommy and daddy anymore (laughs) um I I'm realizing that I can do things on my own and I can it's okay to ask for help clearly but you can try and you can fail and it can be okay. And you don't always have to have that safety net. Like, you can fall, and you can crash, and you can burn, and I am, you know, you're good with that. It sucks. I get upset. I get angry. But it's just a part of life. It's just what happens. And you just kind of have to take it with a grain of salt and pick up and keep on trucking. Very nice. Ashton, as we're sort of closing out here, thank you so much for stopping by. I am so glad that you could join me. Um, Ooh, you, thank you. you I love you so much. So I'm so much. glad I'm here. What was the line that you said again? The You're from San Antonio and you can't sing? Was that it? <laughs> <laughs> Are you telling me I can't sing? No, 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 no. What was that line that you said earlier? <laughs> I don't remember. It was, it was something along the lines of You're from San Antonio and you can't sing. Um, it was, it was, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It was like, yeah, you'll never get to Broadway. Okay. You can't sing. There we go. But you included San Antonio in it. And I think that was what made me yes. laugh so much. Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I said, okay, sorry, sorry. I said, you're for, you're in you go to high school in San Antonio and you can't even sing. There we go. That's it. <laughs> um, if people want to reach out to you, ask you questions about social media, just want to laugh at the funny things that you post, they can find you on Instagram and Twitter at Ashton Clear, correct? Yes, and with two E's, C L E E R. Yes, A S H T O N C L E E R, Ashton Clear. Um, you're also on LinkedIn, Ashton Clear. You also run Clear Social Media. What are the platforms that they can find Clear Social Media on? Just on Facebook? or Right now, yep, right now we're just on Facebook. Uh, just do facebook.com backslash Clear Social Media with two E's. Fantastic. Um, okay, sweet. Thank you so much for joining me, Ashton. And I... Thank you so much um, for having me. I will talk to you. So- I don't know how to close it. We'll just say what? this is the closing right here. Okay. <laughs> and- We're done. And see. And see.